Hello and welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us in from. And um, this is our third Startup Women's event of 2022, building your personal brand as a founder. Um, I'm Isabel Nolan. I'm the program lead at Startup Canada. So you're all very welcome. To begin, I'd like to acknowledge that the land on which I'm on today is located on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and tsleil Youth Nations. We also acknowledge the with respect, the diverse histories and cultures of all Indigenous peoples. I encourage you to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional territory that you're residing on today. We welcome you to connect with each other in the chat. Make sure you're sending your messages to everyone in the room. Um, Zoom defaults it to only send to just the hosts and the panelists, so you just need to change that before you send your messages. And today's session is being recorded and we'll add it to our YouTube channel afterwards as a living resource and we're also live streaming onto Facebook as well. So Startup Canada is a national non-for-profit that is the gateway to Canada's entrepreneurial ecosystem. We're here to connect entrepreneurs with the support, community and tools that they need to build a successful business in Canada. Since launching in 2012, Startup Canada has grown to support more than 122,000 entrepreneurs annually, an ever-growing grassroots community network from coast to coast to coast. Startup Women is one of Startup Canada's flagship programs, a series of free mentorship, advocacy and education initiatives running throughout the year. Um, we are delighted to have this to be scaled into an annual program this year and uh, allowing us to support more women identifying entrepreneurs uh, to be engaged and give long, longer lasting support. Before we get started, we do have a short message from our presenting partner, the Scotiabank Women Initiative. The Scotiabank Women Initiative is dedicated to your success on your terms. I'm shaping our industry's vision for the future. I can expand my business without borrowing from my family. I know I can face anything thanks to my network. I'm ready for my next chapter. I'm inspiring future leaders. I'm making sure my family's future is secure. Define your success and we'll help you achieve it. With unbiased access to capital and tailored solutions, bespoke special specialized education, and holistic advisory services and mentorship. Join our community of women today. I would also like to thank our national and community partners, BDC, Google, Procurement Assistance Canada, TD, UPS, and our youth stream partner, Desjardins. So today's conversation is all focused on equipping you with the tools and know-how to map out your personal brand and how you can leverage it in bringing your business more exposure. And um, we have prepared some questions for our panelists. However, if you do have any questions, you can write it into the Q&A box um, in, on the bottom function bar on the screen and, and we'll flag it to our moderator and we'll do our best to answer it live for you. So without further ado, I'm honored to mention or to introduce our speakers for today. We have Rena Kular, founder and CEO of Alt Agilis Executive Consulting. Vivian Kay, founder and CEO of Kinky Curly Yaki, and also a small business and empowerment expert. And Shania Bopa, director of Canadian Courage Project um, and also a veneer scholar, PhD student and author. And to help guide today's conversation, we have our moderator, Marissa Bronfman, a serial entrepreneur and impact investing advisor. Marissa, I'll pass it over to you. Thank you, Isabel, and to all the amazing panelists, and thank you to everyone who's joined. Um, this is such an important topic. Uh, like Isabel said, I'm a serial entrepreneur and impact investing advisor. I have worked, built businesses and women's initiatives in Canada, the US and India. I am passionate about helping women founders, women investors, and particularly plant-based vegan businesses. I was just saying to all these incredible women, I feel like I've been using social media my entire working life, and yet there's still so much more to learn. Things are changing every day. I'm so excited to hear from Rena, Vivian, and Shania. 
I know you are too. So without further ado, I will let our panelists introduce themselves and then we will kick off with questions. Over to you, Vivian. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vivian Kay. I'm the founder and CEO of Kinky Curly Yaki. It is a premium textured hair extensions brand that I built for Black women. Uh, I scaled it to over uh, to a multi million dollar business. Uh, I also am a business and empowerment expert. So you'll see me on TV or on podcasts. And I'm also a pretty dope lady. So that's all about me. <laughs> I'm going to throw it to Shania. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. My name is Shania, and I am co-founder and director of a GTA-based nonprofit organization called the Canadian Courage Project. I'm also author of a children's book and most recently a Vanier Scholar and PhD student. And so I ground my work in community-based approaches, and it's, it's so rewarding, and I'm just so happy to be here alongside Vivian and Rena and Marissa. So I'll hand it over to Rena. Hi everyone, it's very nice to meet you and thank you Startup Canada for having uh, me join this fantastic panel of uh, entrepreneurial women. It's an honor. Um, I am a founder and CEO of a global management consulting company called Agilis Executive Consulting. Uh, very new. I feel that I'm still uh, very green and learning a lot, but certainly very excited to share parts of my journey and how I can hopefully inspire others to take the entrepreneurial path and continue to learn and grow and see where it'll get to. So thank you. Very excited today. Thanks so much, everyone. So I think a big question in a lot of people's minds is, do you start your business first? Do you build your brand first? Do you do it at the same time? So I would love to hear from all three of you your answer to that. And then after your answer to that, if you could sum up your personal brand in one sentence or a few words, what would that be? I'll go first. Um, okay, so I would say I built the business first, but I based it off of, because I was trying to solve my own problem, I based it off of me and I was my ideal customer. Um, and then when I saw that there were other, and you know, in my, in the space that I'm in, I, I created the niche. So the niche didn't exist before my business started. And so then um, what happened was I went and had a baby and came back and there were all these other players that came into the niche. So then I needed to differentiate myself from those other, from the, from the competition. So what did I do? I started to put my face in front of, in front of the brand. Um, and so then uh, my face was sort of tied to the business. And then over COVID, I more or less really started to really develop my personal brand and, and um, show people how to start businesses and that type of thing. And of course, my personality comes through. So, um, and everything I do. So, you know, if I, as you can see, this is my office. This is what, <laughs> this is how I am all the time, 24 seven. So if I had to use a word to describe myself or to, to describe my brand, I would say um, vibrant, down to earth and knowledgeable. I love it. Um, for, for the course of the hour, um, let's do Vivian, Shania, Tarina, and then when it's organic, anyone just jump in. No worries. <laughs> Great. So I would say my answer to this question, I started my personal brand and the business at the exact same time. Um, the Canadian Courage Project was the first of the three things that I think I focus on, and I the reason is, is I have a communications background and I learned that storytelling is the best form of connecting to humans and, and, and fostering human connection. And so when we think about, I honestly only started when the pandemic broke out, but when you're in a virtual space, it is so hard to foster human connection. And so the best way that you can do so is telling your own story and telling your personal why. Uh, you connect to individuals based on sharing personal experiences. And that's how I started building my personal brand as well as I think it's helped strengthen the roots within both the nonprofit and my children's book and, and sharing advice as a student as well. Um, it can be really crowded in the social media space and remembering that you are you and 
you know, you are a very unique person. It doesn't matter if you're following a trend or you're, you're uh, in a, a similar space, no one can replace you. And so staying true to your core pillars as a person is what kept me going. And the three or the, the, the sentence that would describe me, I would say, is purpose driven and um, grounded in my why. <laughs> Love it, Rena. Yes, no, no, very similar. I think um, there is a synonymous uh, idea here amongst the panel today. I think it's, um, for me personally, it was more uh, a combination. You know, I had um, launched my company during COVID. So at this point, I had about 20 years of experience in the industry and <clears throat> my personal brand was known um, based on who I was. I think there was a lot of personality and relationships and networking had developed significantly by that point. And I think um, similar to what Shania was saying, you know, when, when you're a consultant, you know, similar to lawyers and professional services, you're selling your time. So a lot of the value of time is what clients are looking for. But in order to do that, there has to be a relationship and there has to be a connection. And to do that, you know, in the form of storytelling and writing and thought leadership and, you know, um, case studies, how do you show the value of your time? Because that what, that's essentially what consultants are trying to sell. So for me, um, I capitalized on some of these great relationships I had and moved them forward and started talking about leadership in a different way. And the again, the purpose of how do we define success? And everyone, I think, measures it very differently. So when I started um, my company outside of the core business of what I do, um, I also leveraged an opportunity to tell other people's stories and other leaders' stories. And before I knew it, um, the brand grew global, the contacts grew global, the relationships went global. And so my personal brand, I would say, is well known now for how do you measure success? And it's different for everyone, but it's successful for everyone as well. Thank you. I love all these themes. I'm hearing a lot of storytelling, really um, talking about your purpose, being authentic. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people feel intimidated because there's billions of people on social media. People are talking about, you know, a thousand different topics all at once. And so if you could give some advice to a businesswoman who maybe hasn't started building her personal brand yet, how does she start? Is she sharing her morning latte? Is she sharing a photo from her office? Is she speaking to the camera? What are some um, easy ways and maybe platforms um, that they could start with? Uh, well, I would say share whatever you're comfortable with. Um, like I remember one of the things that I started doing was just singing good morning. <laughs> I would just sing good morning on on Instagram, on Instagram stories. Um, and then it just sort of blew up from there. Uh, so whatever you're comfortable with, um, I find that Instagram stories or even TikTok. Um, I'm actually not a fan of TikTok just because it's just a time sucking, wasting <laughs> app. But I love Instagram stories because I feel like people are really interested in, um, you know, how you make the sausage or how the sausage is made, right? And so they're interested to know about your daily life. Um, and again, you can pick and choose what you want to share. Um, there are some times where I share the fact, I cannot share the fact, but I'm a single mother. So I'll share, you know, my motherhood moments. I remember over COVID, I shared the, I shared a whole uh, thing. I had a whole daily thing about uh, virtual school and how much I hated it. And it was just, I was just sharing the antics and, and, uh, you know, the struggle. And, and that's actually, it's actually funny because I grew my audience a lot from just sharing that. Um, and then also just by sharing my expertise. So again, over the, over the, over the pandemic, I, um, you know, I've been in e-commerce since 2012 and when the world shut down, everyone had to move their businesses online. And here I was already running a business online. So I was showing people how they could also move their businesses online, or if this was the perfect time for them to start a business to how to start that business and what they need to start that business and sharing my story and how I started the business. Um, I, you know, I always say that I'm not necessarily a role model, but I'm a possibility model. So I show 
the journey and where I started. Like I always say, it's like a starting from the bottom. Now I'm here type story. So people have seen my journey and seen where I started and where I've ended up and where I'm going. So you just have to be, you know, you have to be comfortable with what you're sharing. You don't have to share everything. Um, and I would say pick a platform and stick to it. And it, because really it's about, um, it's really about consistency. Uh, and for me, consistency is in the story. So I always show up in my stories. I'm always showing tips, tricks, and, you know, shooting the, sh uh, shooting the, the crap, <laughs> right? And keeping it real, right? So um, I would say, start with what you have and with what you know, and wh whatever you're comfortable with. Love that. Thanks, Vivian. And before we move on um, to the other panelists, I just wanted to tap into what you mentioned, which was providing value. Mm -hmm. So during the pandemic, you really opened up on social media. You started, I think it sounds like giving insight, advice, tips and tricks for business building. Um, can you talk a little bit about how to know when you're giving value for free and that's mm. part of building your brand and part of building your business and then how to know when you want to give that value with a cost associated well that's actually a, a very interesting question because during the pandemic what i realized is that either i had to become a relief or a resource and so then um, i decided to do both so relief in terms of comedic relief and showing my everyday life but then also resource by showing okay here's how you do it one two three and abc Here's how I did it. Here's how you can do it too. So, um, and and there's a fine balance between, um, you know, uh, teaching or, you know, giving people the resources and, or I would say, you know, teaching people to fish and giving them fish, right? And so I, you know, I actually started doing coaching just before the pandemic hit. And what I found was um, a lot of people would come to me with their problems and say, okay, well, I want to start a food business. Okay, well, what kind of food business? And it was just like, oh my goodness, I cannot. So then what I ended up having to do was, you know what, the best use of my time, um, and especially because, you know, I have a lot of expertise, I have an experience, the people who I was attracting couldn't afford to pay me what I wanted to be paid in order to help them get their business to the next level. So then I made a choice. So I said, okay, you know what, I would prefer to work with corporations who can afford to pay me those prices, right? So that I have the energy to give out those resources for free, right? And so you have to really, you really have to look at, you really have to, you, you probably have to do it first to realize, you know, what that fine balance is. And for me, I had to do it. And in order to do it, I, I in order to figure that out, I had to go through it. And so um, you just have to know, you just have to know yourself and what, you know, what you can handle and, and what your audience needs, because your audience will tell you, okay, you know what? I would love for you to coach me. Okay, cool. These are my prices. If they can't afford those prices, then I can't help you because it's a business after all. Right. Yeah. And so then for me, it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm a giver. Like I love to give, but I need to be paid accordingly. So I'd rather charge the, or the, you know, the corporations what they can afford it, but so that I can afford to talk to you and, and tell you how to do it for free. That's amazing and so beautiful. And Vivian, thank you for doing that. And a little bit later in this hour, we're going to come back and talk about um, how to start building partnerships, paid collaborations with brands. So we'll come back to that. Rena, I know a, a, the majority of your business uh, is really time based. Um, so if you could speak to that, the value of time, um, I, we'd love to hear that. Absolutely. I think um, the value of time is actually foundational to uh, any business in the professional services um, industry. And I think what it stems from are the relationships that you eventually build with clients. I think to differentiate yourself, you know, we talk a lot about, of course, what is your personal brand and, you know, why, why this individual in the professional services industry versus another. And it comes down to how unforgettable you can be. And when I say that, unforgettable through what was it that resonated so deeply with the client, not only the product and the service that you ended up delivering, how did you execute that? How did you manage the relationship through it? You know, when clients come to, you know, seek a solution, for example, from a professional services um, individual, they, they also remember the path and the experience and, you know, how deeply did that resonate? Did it deliver the solution in the way that they were hoping? If not, was it better? And if not, 
how could it have been better? So these questions, I think when we, as you know, again, in our industry, when you're selling a service versus a product, it's not tangible. So how can you make that tangible? You start with the relationship. And thereafter, you know, similar to what Vivian had mentioned, you know, you, you make your product tangible eventually. So it's a longer term strategy, but there has to be those baby steps and that relationship has to be there and the connections need to be there and word of mouth, reputation, thought leadership, storytelling, it all comes together, but with some patience and some time and quite honestly, a lot of authentic, authentic conversations and reality of what worked, but also what didn't work. That's so great. Thank you, Rena. In this age of social media, I think we're all used to that dopamine hit, something happening immediately. You know, we have this impression that businesses are built overnight, that you're at 100 million valuation in, in a year. And most people never see what's happening behind the scenes. So I really love this theme of, of patience, of building your brand, authentic storytelling, um, and deciding what your product is, what your service is, while you're providing value. Um, Shania, you have done so many things during the pandemic. I know you just said that you really started building your personal brand, um, you know, just recently. What are some of your tips to people that want to get started? I think the biggest thing is the mental barrier of putting yourself online in general. And so one thing to remember that I constantly tell myself is your inner voice, that inner voice that may be telling you, you know, oh, don't post that. Like it's, it's weird or like, don't post that. It's it, uh, people won't relate to it. Um, it's actually curated based on your external voices. And so how can you curate a positive space around you um, that you're listening to perhaps 24 seven that is motivating you and empowering your inner voice? And so just that mental barrier of putting yourself online in a vulnerable way, perhaps sharing a story is something alone to get, uh, to get comfortable with. And so what I personally do is I try to listen to really positive, uh, uplifting podcasts or reading really positive books um, to drown out any negative voices that I might hear on the day to day, whether it's with peers or, or, or friends or on social media. And so getting over that mental barrier, but then the second component is understanding how to diversify and stay within your own niche. And this might sound very, I, I think it might sound a little different, especially because we see the trends on, the, on TikTok, on Instagram and how they're doing so well. And so you assume that you need to curate something similar to fall within a trend to be liked by X amount of people. And that will take you far, you know, it may, it may help you build a following, but it will not, let's say, pull in the right audience that you're looking for. It might not attract the right companies you want to work for or the right friendships you might want to make on the internet, you know, thinking of social media as a resource for everything. And so, for example, I never saw myself being a content creator and working with companies and doing paid advertisements because I always saw social media as a tool in which would amplify my own businesses, my nonprofit, etc. But um, because I've differentiated myself as a student who is um, building a nonprofit, but also wrote a children's books, that is why now I have uh, created relationships with companies that I, I didn't expect along this journey. Um, so again, it's, it's being authentic to who you are, what you want to share. And it may seem really daunting when you might not know anyone else in your circle also creating a brand or putting themselves out there on social media, but you can find a circle that is doing so and that will welcome you with open arms. And don't be afraid to feel like the black sheep uh, in the group sometimes because that's okay. And you might receive uh, a lot of criticism or judgment, but if you're enjoying the process, that's all that matters. Thank you, that's so powerful. I think our inner voice is often the biggest barrier. And for women, typically, you know, we can be guilty of getting in our own way for a hundred different reasons. So thanks for that advice. Love the positivity. We talked a lot about um, how to build your personal brand, how to personally provide value, how to build services and products out of that journey. 
Um, but I think of this old saying, if a tree falls in a forest and no one's there, does it make a sound? And so for the women who are here in this webinar, maybe they haven't started using social media yet, or they're just getting started, their audience is really small. All three of you have given lots of great tips for how to get started, but how do they build their audience? How do they build engagement? How do they find people if they're not being found, if they don't have that forest, that audience, how can they start to build that as they're building their brand? I would say, uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Rena. Go ahead. Um, you know, I, it's, um, it resonates so deeply, Marissa, what, what you just asked, because I think it's a question often, um, you know, in the world of coaching, particularly for um, executives and leaders who've been in their industry and working for, you know, 20 plus years and wanting to do something different and gravitating out and trying something different. And it's, it's a scary, it's scary because you don't know who you are sometimes and you, it's, it's a journey to self-discovery, self-awareness. A lot of, again, we talk about having the humility to know um, where our weaknesses are and how we can work to make those our strengths. So those conversations, you know, need to occur in a very safe place with a lot of trust, which is why a lot of leaders seek coaches to say, how did you do it? How can I do it? Where's the help? And most of them talk about, you know, seeing the forest for its trees and, vice versa and, you know, becoming lost, I think, in the noise. And I think there, there's just, we, we, keep, we keep talking about this in, you know, the entrepreneurial world is you have to be yourself. There's, there is so much significance in bringing your authentic personality to the table and realizing and going through those moments of, you know, recognition of who you are and wanting to stay who you are. Because your audience and your clients and how you're going to grow your brand is completely dependent on who you are as a person. So the more that you're aware of how to get where you want to get in a very, I think, ethical, um, working with your morality, working with your truth, that's what is going to gravitate your growth. And we've seen it again and again. So I can, I can honestly, you know, sing it, <laughs> sing it to the skies that we need to be real. We need to really, um, you know, be comfortable and happy with who we are first before we embark on any kind of journey. I'd say my piece of advice here on this topic, I agree with Rena uh, in full, full capacity, but listening to people who you actually uh, admire, like listening to the advice of the individuals who are in a place that you hope to be in. So for example, if you are receiving all this feedback and criticism from, from friends, family members, and if you wanted to, let's say, be an entrepreneur who owns a specific uh, teacup business, why would you take advice from anyone who doesn't own a teacup business, right? Ask yourself that question because that's also going to guide the way that you create content or create uh, this branding around who you are as a person because your value set essentially drives your day-to-day -day actions, but determining what your value set is before you go through your day-to-day -day actions is just as important. And so that goes for posting online, but that also goes for the output in which you are uh, curating. So conversations you're having with people, networks that you're building, um, and just again, take advice from people who you actually admire and who you actually might see a similar paralleled life to um like especially vivian offers very specific advice for uh her products that she's built um so going to vivian for that purpose or if you wanted to build a nonprofit, you would go to me specifically but listening to advice from people in the industries that you hope to be in is like the best advice i wish someone told me two years ago Thank you, Vivian. Uh, oh, I, you know, I, both both ladies mentioned everything they said was absolutely correct, and um, I honestly don't remember the question. So, um, 
So the question was, you know, what are some what are some pieces of advice and tips for getting started? But I think we have lots already. Um, I can't believe we're halfway through this webinar. So I'll move on to something um, that you know I want to learn more about. I think everyone does that. All three of you are doing so well, which is how do you build paid partnerships and collaborations with brands? So you know, Vivian, I love what you said. You know, there were a lot of women that needed your help and your advice and your guidance, but couldn't necessarily afford your rates and so absolutely you shouldn't lower your rates you should have a corporation pay what you deserve to be paid i love that um, maybe you could kick this off how do we go about um, building relationships and paid partnerships and collaborations with brands um you know i gotta be honest um every single thing you've seen me do is because someone's reached out to me and so i have this thing where it's like you never know who's watching and so then that's why you just, you just have to create the content and it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I always say, start where you are with what you have and with what you know, because you're going to learn and, you know, evolve and everything along the way. But really it's like, let me, I'll give you an example of how, so I'm currently the entrepreneur expert on city line on city TV. How that started was I started a show on IGTV called mind your business with Vivian K where I was teaching you everything entrepreneurial, um, you know, empowerment and, and e-commerce. And every single week I showed up on, in, no, sorry, it started on Instagram Live. I showed up every single week on Instagram Live. Then I turned it into an IGTV show. Then I turned it into, then I put all those episodes and I put it onto YouTube. But I kept creating that content and I, I created like 44 episodes or something. And I just kept creating the content. I didn't care who wasn't watching. But what I learned is that people were watching and the right people watch, right? So I've always just sort of, I'm always a big, per, I'm a big, you get what you put out. So if you keep putting out the content and you're making sense and you're, and you're doing it in your own way and you're being engaging and you're being yourself, you're going to attract the things that the, the audience and the brand partnerships that, um, that, that suits you. So even like, even all the brands that I work with, uh, you know, I work with say American express, I work with LG, I work with Telus, like I work with all these big brands because somebody watched something and somebody went and said, you should go and work with this woman because she's awesome. Because I said I was awesome. Right. <laughs> and so, and so, um, but you know, but you can still do reach out. So you can even just think, you know, let's just say if you have a particular mug that you love, create content based on that. They don't have to reach out to you, tag them. And then when they see it, then it's like, oh, wow, we really love the fact that you created this UGC, this user generated content with our mugs. We would love to work with you. The thing is you can't wait for them to come to you. You have to create that content and you have to create it in your way, in your fashion. If you want to go and, if you want to go and copy what everyone else is doing, you're just going to get lost in the sea of noise. So you have to do it your way. It's the only way you're going to stand out. That's such great advice. And yes, you are incredibly awesome. Um, I have a follow-up question for that. You started creating this show when you were putting it together in your mind was, did you have an ultimate goal? Were you like, I'm going to start creating this content and it's going to snowball and it's going to grow and I'm going to end up having these incredible paid partnerships? Or you literally were just thinking, this is what I need to put out today for the people who are following me today. Yeah, it was because literally people would DM me and say, well, how, what, like, what exactly is marketing? Like, how exactly can I do that for my business? And instead of answering them one-on-one, -on -one, I just, well, let me create a, a video showing people what marketing is. How do I do Shopify? What's the difference between this and that? All my FAQs basically that I would get, I would create episodes based on the questions that I was getting. And, and so, and, and then I did it in my way, right? So it was just me talking to the camera, you with my nails and I'd be like, Pack. like I literally <laughs> would do it just like, I was just talking to you like, Hey girl, you know what? Mm, stop doing that. Here's what you should do and why. And, and that's, that's what people love, right? They don't want cookie cutter. They want you to be yourself. So, so yeah. One more follow-up question, and this can be for all three of you. Um, Vivian, it sounds like when you started a lot of the things that you're known for now, you already had an audience. So like you said, people were DMing you, there were questions. And so it was easier from a value time perspective for you to answer everyone. And then your audience continued to grow. But if there was a businesswoman that literally had an audience of zero, like she hasn't even started her Instagram account or she's kind of on Insta, but maybe she wants to explore TikTok. If you have no audience, Nobody's asking you a question, but you can provide a lot of value. You've got things to talk about. You're unique. 
how do you go about building your audience if it's if it's zero or close to zero and this can be for for anyone you literally just start <laughs> just start like it's not and like like shania mentioned like it's mostly mental just start even if if you get one view on that video that's one person that you've changed right and every like you know there's this i heard this saying where someone was like oh if you only get 100 likes on a video then you feel like it's nothing if 100 people in, were in a room and said i love that video you would be overwhelmed right and so you can't you can't look at the numbers you absolutely cannot you have to just you just have to just start and trust me when your for when your tree falls you're going to be in the right forest the right people will hear your tree fall <laughs> i agree with vivian as well oh sorry rita um but so i had a little bit of a different experience with social media because i started using social media for a photography business. I did photography for corporation parties and weddings and events. And I always saw working with brands as working with people. You are working with people at the end of the day. So delivering them a service of, let's say, you know, here's the package that you purchased. These are the photos I'm taking. This is what I'm delivering to you at the highest quality that I can and learning email etiquette and learning all of those things before I started my page while by Shania and just sharing life about everything that I'm doing is again at the end of the day you're dealing with people and so in terms of working with brands and working with these awesome opportunities that you might have sometimes it's a person behind the title of whatever that brand is like for example I just did a campaign with Sobeys I worked with a PR team that Sobeys hired that is representing Sobeys, you know, so thinking about what their values are as people as well and what they want to see from you. And I think the, the hardest part about social media is being real with yourself. Like if let's say you are really consistent with your content and you are what you think providing value, you have to remember that you are catering to the consumer of that content. So at times you may love the things that you're posting. You might feel like um, it, it really aligns with what you're doing, but if it's not aligning with what a consumer is looking to hear, it might be very difficult to grow or scale your platform. So I think there's a lens of yes, being authentic at all times, but also understanding what people need are needing from the internet. What are they looking for? What are they searching up uh, consistently in terms of, questions and being not authentic with yourself if you created a series and it's not performing well uh, compared to another series that you recently created why is that analyze that series in isolation of itself and understand that it actually might not be providing the value you think it is it might actually not be as attractive um as a like maybe your your series titles aren't as um uh well developed as you thought um being real with yourself that maybe it's just not good <laughs> and how can you reframe that content re reshoot it perhaps and um make it something that is going to attract the people or the consumers or the brands that you're looking for i think also in the age of tiktok uh it is very very saturated at the moment um there's this whole wave of like micro influencers, which I don't necessarily uh, love the idea of, but you know, it's the world we're living in with a virtual world essentially. And so understanding that if you continuously follow the trends and, and connect with other people and learn from those who are in the field, you will get somewhere and staying hopeful and, and optimistic as well along the way. There's anything I can add. This is such great um, feedback and um, advice, Vivian and Shania, is just to incite curiosity. I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, that inside voice, Shania, that you talked about is, you know, well, why would so-and-so want to work with me? What do I have? You know, when I started my brand or my company in, in COVID, I didn't have Instagram. I was very, very um, unaware of how to market and brand using social media platforms outside of LinkedIn. And so LinkedIn had been very successful for me to date. So when I started, my idea wasn't so much about quantity. 
It was about quality and it was about really targeting those clients that I knew could possibly help get my story out or get my brand out there and um, inciting that curiosity. So how you create the content, what you're writing on the content that will actually trigger individuals to say, okay, so what exactly is Agilis? What exactly is Rena doing? Um, why did she connect? You know, why did she go over to New York and connect with Hacky? Who is Hacky? Hacky is well known for his journey, for his hardships. He has a story that people across the globe want to hear about. So my curiosity about Hacky's journey incited curiosity about why Rena wants to go beyond the bio with Hacky, for example. So, I mean, I think um, just, just knowing that for the number of no's that you'll expect to reach, there is just so much opportunity for that one or two yeses that can actually steer you exactly where you need to go and how you're going to measure success. So just never stop. I think the number of no's should be powerful to drive your motivation, if anything. Rena, thank you so much for that. Um, I think a huge part of entrepreneurship is hearing no and taking Shania's advice to just surround yourself with positivity. I think that's been the advice from all of you and to keep going and to really own your niche. Um, Shania, you were going to say something on that? Yes. In relation to Rena's point about uh, no and the idea of failure, um, I created this concept for myself it's called failure immunity. And so I purposefully now choose to be in positions where I know I'm going to receive a no or a rejection or a failure because now I'm immune to the idea of no. And now I'm immune to the, the feeling of being rejected. So if anyone is fearful or has that anxiety or that like sadness that you feel when you get rejected from a job or um, an interview didn't go well or you didn't get a scholarship or something like that, um, I purposefully apply to things that I know I am not qualified for just to condition myself in receiving no constantly. Um, so receiving that, like, I didn't, let's say, get an interview for this company. I didn't want to work for the company anyways, but it's how I'm training my brain to continuously put myself out there and that no and failure, there's no such thing as failure being a negative consequence. It's actually just a, an experience in which you've tried. And so if you condition yourself to feeling like life is just about trying different things and things go your way and things won't go your way, but understanding how to be immune to the feeling of sadness when you may perceive a failure. Um, Shania, I feel like that is a new business for you. <laughs> Immunity to failure coming soon to bookshelves and, and the Apple store near you. <laughs> This is my immunity to failure. I, whenever oh, yeah. I think, I think, what would Chad do? And I always think, what would a mediocre white guy do if he was me? And I would do it because they have no fear. They have the audacity. They think the world is theirs. So why shouldn't I go for it? Why not? As I like to say. Um, so with your immunity, I love that. The immunity to failure. I would think, what would Chad do? And then I just go and do that, except I'm not a jerk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Vivian, that's so amazing. Um, I need to order one of your mugs. So we've got just over 10 minutes left. Um, and I would love to give some um, examples to the people that have joined us of women that you really respect and admire who have built successful personal businesses and brands. Um, but just before we do that, we've had some questions that I've seen throughout the hour um, regarding different um, kinds of media or different ways. And so I think we've talked a lot about Instagram. We've talked a lot or touched upon TikTok, but Rena, I know for you specifically, you had incredible, incredible ROI on an unpaid Harvard, Harvard Business Review article. Um, and so before we jump into some examples of women, I'd love for you to speak about that because ultimately not every businesswoman is going to feel comfortable or be able to use Instagram or TikTok to her advantage. So um, please tell us about the Harvard Business Review as an example of other ways businesswomen can build their brand and their business. Absolutely. You know, and I'll tie that into perhaps, you know, the Forbes Coaches Council, Council as well. Um, when, you know, for my brand specifically, a lot of it is, again, thought leadership, talking about 
your experience, um, but also writing about your experience so that there are moments of education and you know, learning and development that clients can take away and maybe possibly grow themselves as well, opportunities. So, you know, through Harvard Business Review, there's a lot of research that goes into the articles that are written. So becoming an advisory board member allows me to utilize all of the experience and the learnings and professional development that I've gone through um, and help research for what's working and what isn't and be a part of the momentum through the Harvard Business Review publication to um, create content and have the writers understand, you know, from real live case studies, um, how to share, how to share again, uh, success and how to share failures through the Forbes Coaches Council. Of course, uh, it is a platform. It is a, you know, world renowned platform that allows you to write articles about, again, your thought leadership. This is all about education and so, for, for my brand specifically, because it's in professional services and I'm selling my time, eventually the longer term strategy is how to monetize a product. When you have a service, how do you turn that service into a monetized product that can sell and still generate revenue eventually? But again, patience, getting to know you, um, who I am, using the right partnerships and the brands to help me grow my business and bring my voice to the table. So all of that, I think the collaboration is key. The collaboration is key. We can't do it alone. Entrepreneurship is already um, a solo journey in some sense. So you don't have to be alone. Just know that you can create and you know, foster those partnerships along the way forever if possible. Thank you for that. That's really powerful. Ultimately, um, you know, social media is often a free tool available to a lot of us, um, but there are other ways. So for the women that are attending today, there's lots of different avenues and um, it's worth knowing yourself, but also getting outside of your comfort zone and exploring some different ways that you may be able to build your business and your brand. So um, in our last few minutes, would love to hear from everyone. Um, an example of a woman could be a Canadian woman or otherwise um, who's built a business and a personal brand that you really respect and admire, someone who you look to and maybe people who have joined us today could look to. I wanted to um, give an example and a Canadian one and I actually think all the women dragons of Dragon's Den have done this incredibly well. They all have multi-million dollar businesses. You know, um, they're incredible business people. And they've also used TV, which is sort of an older medium, and social media, a newer medium, to build their brand. They then have alternative revenue streams. So a lot of them get paid for speaking gigs or media appearances. And they do a lot of free things as well. So if you see them, you know, interviewed on the news, they're probably not getting paid for that, but they reach maybe an audience of 10 million and it furthers build their brand. So I would say, you know, look to those women of Dragon's Den, great Canadian examples of business women uh, who've built their personal brands. And I would love to hear from all three of you uh, who you look to. The first person that comes to mind is Pyle Kadakia. She is the founder of ClassPass, which is an app on your phone that you can pretty much go to any city in the world and register for a workout class that you search up on the app. And again, the reason why I selected her to share is she wrote a book recently called Life Pass. And she discusses concepts that I've never heard in a business book before. Um, the troubles of being an entrepreneur and starting a business when uh, you are born and raised in an immigrant household. So the concepts that her parents were teaching her about um, norms that she had to potentially follow um, to be uh, an exceptional person on this planet. And so talking about uh, different cultural backgrounds and the influence that it may have on your professional journey was something I hadn't read about before, which was quite interesting. Um, and she... I, I really admire when individuals create companies that are based on accessibility and improving accessibility, uh, because I think there are so many barriers to so many things in this world that if we can just remove those barriers in any way, shape or form, it's exceptional. And so she is on Instagram and has a book. So I'm sure if you Google Pyle Kadakia, you can definitely search her up. 
Thank you for that. I love Pyle. She's incredible. And so are you. Um, Rena and Vivian, who, who do you look to? Rena, you're muted. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I look to the works of Susan David. Susan David, of course, wrote Emotional Agility. And um, again, when we talk about entrepreneurship, just understanding our emotions and being agile to navigate uh, the tough times and the good times and really, I think, um, playing on that vulnerability and being real. So Susan David, her work and her programs and how she encourages leaders and executives and entrepreneurs specifically in making sure that we're well aware of what we're feeling. So again, you know, there's, there's, there's the business side and there's professional and personal, but people don't realize how closely connected their personal and professional lives are. So being very, very aware of how you're feeling in the moment through your journey of entrepreneurship, Susan David's book on emotional agility taps into how to guide you through those moments. And so um, I would highly recommend her book. It's, it's definitely been uh, core for, for my business and I still follow some of the work that she does. So pretty incredible. Thank you. Uh, for me, uh, the someone who's, she's actually a friend of mine as well, um, but she's not an entrepreneur. She's more of an intrapreneur. So she still, she works the corporate life nine to five. Her name is Bozema St. John. And she started her career working with Spike Lee and then moved on to Pepsi. Uh, you know, one of the first C-suite executives at Apple Music that was a black woman. Uh, and most recently she was the, uh, the chief uh, global marketing officer at Netflix. And she calls herself a badass. And so for me, she was like, I, just, I looked to her because she, she has the audacity. She demonstrates what that audacity is. And she's moving through these corporate spaces as she is. And, um, you know, she lets people know, listen, if you don't like me, you can go kick rocks with flip flops, but you can't argue that I have the expertise in the, in the, in the knowledge to grow and, and, you know, to move businesses. And so, you know, I love what she does and I just absolutely love her. And she's actually given me the courage to be, to show up more as myself in every space. Um, because, you know, as a black woman, sometimes we find that we have to sort of mold ourselves just to, we're not offensive. We're not seen, seen as aggressive. We're not seen as all these things that we don't, that, that are stereotyped against us. And so she's just made it um, very easy for me to be myself and, and it's worked. So, so yeah. Amazing recommendations and suggestions. Um, I'm so grateful to have heard from the three of you this last hour. Thank you so much. I think some of the themes that have come across for me are, of course, authenticity, providing value, um, also sort of testing what works and what doesn't, being really honest with yourself as well as your audience. Um, were some of the themes that stuck out. And for everyone that joined us today, uh, this recording, uh, will be available as well as the transcript. So if you missed a book recommendation or advice that you really loved, um, you'll be able to catch it later. Um, I am going to just uh, leave it off to the three of you. If you have anything else that you want to share, and then uh, we'll let Isabel from Startup Canada wrap it up. Uh, I wanted to just answer the quickly answer the question about how to balance motherhood and workload when you're being a business owner. You can't. <laughs> I say I always like to use the analogy of um, you know, glass balls and plastic balls. So everything in your life. So whether it be crazy soft day at school or a really important project that you're working on for your business, you have to determine which of them are glass balls and which are or which are plastic. Because as you know, plastic bounces, but glass breaks. So you don't necessarily say, okay, motherhood is all glass and work is all glass. And, you know, my, my spouse, you know, handling my dealing with my partner or my family is plastic. No, you have to pick different situations and figure out which is glass and which is plastic. Because again, plastic will bounce, but glass will break. So focus on those glass balls. Rena or Shania, any, any last words? To say just to go for it. I think, you know, um, the biggest uh, hurdle is sometimes just ourselves. So if you just try, there's nothing, nothing to lose, really. 
um, you have nothing to lose, just absolutely everything to gain. The gain is not necessarily a multi-million dollar business. The gain is a lot of intrinsic motivation and a lot of learning and development, which can change you as a person. So there's just nothing more, there's nothing more I can say other than give it a try. And if it doesn't work, just try again and don't stop. I'd say I have two pieces of advice. The first one is surround yourself with people who inspire you and who make you want to be a better person. And the second is chat with people who are in places you hope to be in and learn from the people who are in those places because they are resources and they are willing to help more than you might think. And so reaching out to them for a 10 minute coffee chat um, can be the best, best thing you could do. I love all of that. Shania, Vivian, Rena, thank you so much to everyone who joined us. Um, you know, feel free to reach out to these incredibly inspiring business women. Uh, find them on Instagram and their websites and all sorts of places that you can look up from Startup Canada. Thank you so much. Um, over to you, Isabel. Thank you so much. That was incredible. And um, before I do my sort of thank yous to everyone, I do have a quick poll that I would love to get everyone's feedback on if possible. So I'll, I'll make that live while I, uh, I do my closing remarks. But thank you so much, Marissa, for guiding an incredible conversation. I feel like we probably could have stayed on for another hour at least and really dove into even more things. Um, and Chania, Vivian and Rena, thank you so much for donating your time and expertise. And um, one thing I took away that um, Vivian brought up a few times was um, having the audacity. And I oftentimes find that 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 word is typically reserved for a woman in a, in a negative space. So reframing it and being like, yes, having that audacity to do something because why not? So I loved that. I, I'm, I'm That's something that I'm taking away from today's discussion. So thank you so much for that. Um, so yes, thank you all so much for joining us. And um, again, I would like to take a moment to thank our presenting partner, the Scotiabank Women Initiative and our other uh, national and community partners, BDC, Google, Procurement Assistance Canada, UPS, and our youth stream partner, Desjardins. Um, so if you enjoyed this, we do have two more webinars this year. Our next one is all about embracing connection and finding the right community for you and your business. And that will be Wednesday, September 28th. And we can share the, the uh, registration link in the chat. Um, all of the sort of tidbits, uh, nuggets of gold, aha moments, we will be packaging them up for you and sending them off to you uh, probably tomorrow as well as any of the book recommendations, podcasts, all of that will package up for you. So if you did miss it, not to worry, we'll, uh, we'll send on to you. Um, but yes, thank you all so much for joining us today and uh, have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thanks, everyone.